Here's Wilson, and on the right side, he Hello and welcome once again to the Power Play Point Podcast. This is your host, the Blue Liner on Point. And wherever you are in the DMV, that is the District of Columbia, State of Maryland, and the Commonwealth of Virginia. Welcome once again to another week of Caps Hockey Talk. And to join me as always in this endeavor, she is the mermaid, but she's definitely not a fisherman's slave. Uh-huh. It is the be- beautiful, wonderful Anna Knox. Happy Sunday, girl. Happy, Happy freaking sun- Sunday. Happy Sunday. And uh, how are things in Centraville? Centraville's been good. It good. Yesterday was quiet. Um, there is nothing like having a Saturday of, you know, nothing to do except, you know, maybe go to lunch or something after a full moon. Because I'll tell you, this week was crazy. It oh, I only, was I only crazy. wish I had nothing to do on a Saturday, but go on. <laughs> yes. So I was kind of a bum yesterday. Um, and today was good. And we'll talk about later what what I did over at the Dallas Expo. Um, and that was it. But yeah, some some good hockey to talk about this week. Well... Some I'm kidding. <laughs> some, some of it was good. I know it wasn't. It wasn't a stellar week. No, it was not, and uh, that that will be the meat <clears throat> and potatoes of this episode, yeah. uh, which you will be hearing uh, later on. Um, Want to get uh, one or two things out of the way first, though. Uh, okay, so yeah, okay, so apparently this little experiment nine with a a puzzle within a contest within the show is not working because I couldn't get a response uh, (laughs) out of anybody, couldn't draw uh, money with a crayon, even if it were green, Uh, couldn't get a guy who just came out of a Taco Bell to pass gas, however you want to say it. Um, But we'll we'll go over this last week's information. I said it was three caps who shared the same origin, same place of origin, uh, those uh, three Washington Capitals were uh, current fourth liner winger Chandler Stevenson, uh, who is from Saskatoon originally, uh, current goalie Braden Holtby, uh, who is from Lloydminster, and former forward Brooks Like, who is from a place called Wawota. And all of three, all of these three places are located where? In the province of Saskatchewan. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Saskatchewan was your common light motif, your common theme from last week. Um, but since nobody was interested in even placing a guess, we're going to scrap it. Thank you for not playing. Do not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. <throat> it's because everybody was on my side when I said, "Is it Tommy in Toronto?" And you immediately shot it down. And so they're like, "You know what? Screw it. If it's not Tommy in Toronto and two other players from Toronto, I'm not going to play." But that would have been too easy, though. Not, well, but but I will give you this. Okay, <clears throat> I didn't know <laughs> the answer to this which is not surprising. I mean, come on now. But I will say that listening back at the show, it wasn't obvious. <laughs> and well, I think I think sometimes that's maybe what people need is like for you to be like, and the second player, or here are the three people I'm talking about. Brooks like, Stevenson, and who's the other one? Uh, Holtby. Holt be and what do they all have in common then people can be like oh they're all canadian but narrow it down but when you like you know 
throw their name out randomly in the middle of a conversation, I'm not thinking, oh, wait, that could be one of the guys. And so that's just. Oh, okay. Okay. Does that I, make I, sense? It, like, I'm not saying, I'm not saying it wasn't a great idea. And I'm not saying that we should just like toss it out. But I think you should say, like, make it a challenge for the, you know, the, people who love hockey as much as we do, but make it like, Hey, here are three names. Tell me the things that they have in common. Tell me the one, what's the common theme? Like when they do on the radio when they're like, you know, here's three songs and you're like, Oh, it's all ACDC or it's, you know, it's like, uh, thank God it's Friday, you know, whatever the theme is. And I think you would okay. be very good at that. All right. All right. I, yeah, I, I hear you. And I, okay. I think, uh, I think, I think you got a point there. So yeah, we'll, we'll retool it. Uh, I'll figure out a way to make it, you know, a little bit more user friendly as it were a little bit more obvious. So, uh, we'll, we'll shelve it for now and, and, uh, probably br bring it back later on. So, okay. Uh, okay. All right. But that was, yeah, that was, that was last week and last week's theme again, uh, places in Saskatchewan of current and former capitals that are originally from Saskatchewan, that lovely Canadian province that looks like a parallelogram. <clears throat> uh, you're not the only one that can assign homework. <laughs> yeah, but I'm more fun when I do it. I'll bet you are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. So yes, it was, um, uh, as we hinted earlier, an up and down week, um, a good share of ups and, uh, un unfortunately a share of downs as well for our Washington capitals this past week. We're going to get into the nuts and bolts of that, but before we do, I just want to address a concern I have. And I'm gonna, trying to be I'm trying to be as lighthearted as I can about it, but I am genu genuinely concerned about it. And that's once again the general behavior of a lot of our fans. I'm seeing a lot of uh, fellow Facebook groups uh, that were exhibiting a lot of negative behavior. I'll name a few: uh, the True Caps fans zone, uh, the True Caps fans, um, uh, Washington the Washington Capitals fans group uh, hosted by Sonia Kendall. Um, just, well, I mean, I, I don't want to single out any group. It was, it was in a lot of places. Um, and uh, while I'm at it, I want to uh, throw a shout out out to uh, the, uh, the latest one to accept our podcast posting. That's uh, my steps caps fans group. Uh, hello out there to uh, all in that group. Thanks for listening. Uh, but, and and he even said, hey, look, you know, I, I'm I'm proud of our group for not being negative. I'm seeing and he was the one to point it out. He gave me the idea, to mm -hmm. be honest, because he saw it and he's like, look, I'm going all over to these Facebook posts, other groups, and there's a lot of negativity. And it's it's just too early in the season for that. And I'm proud of our guys for not having all of that, not putting up with it. And, you know, he's got a point, I, you know, and look, it's it's safe to say that. Caps fans are among the most passionate, if not the most passionate fans of hockey that are out there. And you can kind of understand that the sport of ice hockey arouses that kind of feeling, especially if you follow the team for a long, long time and or you love the team as much as Anna and I do and, and others. So I think you can all understand that when some of us see something that, you know, isn't quite good don't see the team performing as well as they should etc cetera, etc cetera. you know we're going to get a little peeved we're going to say some things that probably a lot of things don't like but most of us i would say mean it in a way or try to mean it in a way that is constructive to the team now hey this guy isn't playing good he ought to be doing this blah 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 and so that's one group. And there's there's another group, though, that is finger pointing and wagging and saying, well, you shouldn't be saying these things at all. Shame on you for having a negative opinion. And to both of these groups, well, let me let me just say, first of all, if if you're listening to this show, hopefully you fall in the extreme middle because you're the smart ones. You're not taking either one of those extremes. <laughs> but uh there there are those two camps, and I just want to say to both of them, lighten up, Francis. 
Come on. It is too early in the season for this shit. Come on, guys. Look, um, two, th- two things mainly, all right? Do not begrudge the Caps fan for complaining about the team, okay? A lot of us, as I said, have been in this thing a long, long time, been through a lot of heartbreak. We know the telltale signs. Don't deny us our opportunity to say, hey, this is not good. This can be better, you know, but, and you on the other side, though, if you're going to complain, make it constructive. Try to stick to facts or stats or something like that. Something based on you know, something factual or, or a keen observation that, that you've made. Okay. You can say, for example, uh, Stevenson played like crap. Uh, Holtby should have had that save. Something like that. But don't say stupid stuff like, oh, Holtby needs to be traded right now. We need to fire Reardon. We need to get rid of the whole coaching staff. We need to get rid of this guy and that guy. Don't say stuff like that two two weeks into the season. I mean, come on. That's like taking that's like taking maybe a small fingerful of pie, uh, key lime pie, and immediately declaring it bad. Well, I just bad. Uh, I yeah, I just remembered you don't like key lime uh, pie. The worst. But no, I, I get where you're coming from. <clears throat> okay, okay, bad example, but you it was know what a I'm terrible saying. example. But but no, I get it. I mean, the my whole thing is, uh, I feel like DC sports fans are in like a category all on their own, and I'll never say they're you know bandwagon fans, although there's some. Um, but these are the same group of people that were talking crap about the nationals and how terrible they were and why did we give up Bryce Harper? And then all of a sudden, look, we're, you know, possibly world series bound and now everyone's a fan, you know, it's, it's, it's that kind of stuff that it's like, Oh my God. So we're at what eight games in and have another 72, 74 games to go. And that what I've always called them, those couch coaches, the ones who just want to take it to the a level it, just doesn't need to go to it's like come on you know you got to have some faith in the coaching staff you have to have some faith in the players more than anything that you know that they're going to go out there they're going to perform they know what they need to do and when you're not playing a hundred percent or given a hundred percent or you're getting you know stupid penalties or whatever it is then you know what all right bench your ass and you know bring up the next one but the people who like it's one thing to say you're frustrated although i can't say that i am it's so early in the season but when we start to get nasty and people are just being jerks <clears throat> you're not truly a fan because you're not looking for any positive in the situation exactly and that's and and so i get what you're saying it's you know we can all be frustrated and we could have a terrible season, but in the end, the fans are the ones who are like, don't care, you know, ride or die. This is my, this is my team. I'm rocking the red till the end. And, and those are the people I'd rather hear from rather than these, you know, like, Hey, I'm going to post this and, and then I'm going to leave your group and I'm going to go to another group and I'm going to post this and I'm going to, you know, kind of be a dick about things. And it's you like, know, Oh, whatever. That, yeah. That, that, no, that we don't, need at all no and and so my message to everybody is don't be a dick keep well that and and (laughs) keep keep your keep your cool keep your wits about you look trust me i was very upset at some of the results that occurred uh in these last few games you can trust me on that and a lot of words that i ought not be saying in front of young children came out of my mouth but that's when you back up, you take the time to evaluate the situation, and you you just move on from there. And I'm glad you mentioned uh, the the Nats, um, and I, I mentioned I want to mention them, uh, even though we are purely a hockey show. Uh, but I want to mention them. Uh, congratulations on them for having so far the best uh, postseason they've ever had, and. Right. Uh, 
also uh, i was oh, just yeah. uh, i was i was getting there and yeah. also congratulations to the washington six and suffice it to say they got it della donna oh yeah i, I she is a badass uh yeah i forget what i forget what the stat was but um i saw something at the end of the end of their season they that she averaged like something like uh this was this was up there with with regular NBA or she something like uh, uh, fifty points or fifty something fifty something um, that was right up there with the top stars. Oh and, yeah, and, no, she's and, fantastic. And, and and yeah, so the you know some of the legit NBA stars were like, yeah, man, this this is a world class talent. Yeah, and you better believe it. She is. It was. Okay. And, 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 you know, what? just, again, it's, it's just one of those moments for, for, you know, uh, for the Capitals to bring the Stanley cup here for the first time and, and forever. And the mystics bringing it for the first time and God, if the Nets and the world series, it would be fantastic. And, and that's when you see that, you know, that the true fans that will come out and say, I've been watching this team for 44 years been watching this team. I think the mystics have been around since 96. Um, you know, it's like, that's, that is fantastic stuff. And so when I see these negative people, um, I often on, on the Facebook pages or on Twitter, I oftentimes think that they're just kind of sitting back wanting to, you know, kind of poke the bear. They're just, they're kind of looking, just looking for a reaction. There's again, they're just being a dick and it's like, it's noise. It is. And, And it's like, you know, you either choose to respond or you don't, but it's not worth, you know, letting them sit back and, and laugh at, you know, how much we're getting hyped up only eight or nine games and being like, Oh, and this person, it's like, you know, I don't even give them the time of day. It's not no, worth it. No. Not, not worth it at all. So that, so congratulations once again to uh, a couple of other franchises in the area uh, way to be. And, and thanks for uh, giving DC fans some more reason to cheer. Yeah, but back to our team. Yes, the team we cover on the show. Speaking <laughs> of other other fans and fan events, I understand uh, you. Uh, well, you you mentioned this a little bit uh, ago when we started. Uh, you had a to do earlier uh, today. I did. Uh, it was it was kind of it was a big bucket list moment for me. Um, last year I had uh, my Tommy. Um, photo op, which was amazing, and my Kempney photo op, which looked like we were in a hair commercial together, which was also amazing, and DSP, where he is just cool as shit, and uh, love that guy, and then my my number 13, where I think I was like, I felt like we were going on our first date, both nervous, <laughs> um, but today I had, a, I had an opportunity to have a picture with Ovechkin, and it was uh, it was surreal. Nice. I will say, I will say that it was it was kind of um, amusing. I guess like I, I basically stood in line for three hours. Um, luckily, uh, one of our listeners who I became friends with in in line last year, Aubrey was he was up here from oh god, his drive is like four hours, which is crazy. Um, so we were able to kind of amuse ourselves. Uh, you know, talking and and whatever, but um, was yeah, it was, out, was it outside or inside? It was inside. It was at the Dallas Expo. It's and it, and they do yeah these fantastic sports. Uh, like so, oh my god, I I, t- I had a total sports nerd moment because um, Randy Johnson walked by. Okay, so here's your pitcher. He's like seven feet tall. He looks exactly the same. I was like, oh my god, there he is and. And then uh, a huge, huge, huge line for Charlie Sheen. Kind wait, of wait, 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 yeah. wait, wait. Yeah. Randy Johnson and Charlie Sheen were also at this thing? Oh, yeah. And then um, they had a Sandlot photo op. And oh my God, there were so many people there. I mean, it was really quite kind of crazy where I had to like take a little double take to be like, wait, hold on. But I will say, that um there were i want to say there were three 
players, possibly five, but three of the players uh, for the 1980 U.S. gold men's hockey team. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I saw. And and uh, yeah, I think I know where you're going with this. Yeah. Uh, but, but go ahead. No, I was just going to say. So so Christian Levesque was there. Uh huh. Um, yep. that's, that's, I will that's tell you all those pictures excited like a kid in a candy store it was amazing every time somebody walked by he'd be like oh and like say their name i will say that his wife rocks were both tommy fans but she just she just kind of took it in like who is this person and why (laughs) (laughs) why do we care kind of and i'm like that's what my husband's at home because he's like why do i care um i met tony alcott Sweet cool. as could be. He was so pumped to be there. He had two pucks signed by the by the players from the 1980 Olympians. Um, Diane Doyle was in line with me. She was super pumped about that. And she's always, you know, been a Ovechkin fan. So she had things signed. And then your our beloved Sonia Kendall and her husband. They were yep. behind me. So it was oh, it was very cool. Just, yeah. I, yeah. I don't I, I know I already talked about this, but I, I uh, met met them at the uh, the first preseason game. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Great people. Fantastic. So so it was um, it was a humbling moment to to meet the grade eight. I will say, even though he was an hour late, I was annoyed for the people who were waiting for Charlie Sheen because it pushed all of our time back. And I was here. I am like seriously, Charlie Sheen. How rude. And then they're telling me that, you know, a Vetchkin hasn't come. He's not even in the building. He's not even close. And I just, I couldn't say the same. I was like, well, I'll wait forever. I'll just sit here and wait until <laughs> he decides to, uh, I don't know, get up from his nap. And like, he flew in from Dallas last night, you know? <laughs> so, but it was good. It was good. It was, uh, I, not a fan of the picture I took with him, but I don't care. Grade eight, goat fantastic um it was it was a perfect way for me to end kind of well sort of pseudo end my weekend and we got totally off topic and i apologize for that no 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 that's not uh it's not off topic at all uh you know we we said kind of hinted last week you were you were going to be at a uh a a special major event and Mm -hmm. uh yeah here, here it is and it's a good thing uh, you were. It was indoors, uh, of course. Uh, you had, I bet, your Tommy Wilson sock keep you warm or help you. Yeah. You know what? I didn't. Which I know. I like. I thought I was going to, and because it was so cold, and I, yes, I wore them all weekend. But I stepped outside and I said, "You know what? Screw it. I'm going to put on <laughs> uh, my blue Capitals sweatshirt that I got last year and my shorts." And my flip flops, because it's finally feeling like fall, and I'm so glad that I did. Although my legs hurt like hell for standing for three hours, but you know what? It was worth it. Yeah, Sounds Tommy, like it was. Tommy socks, I love them. I'll bet you do. Yeah, commando yeah. and the Tommy socks. I that may be my new thing. Mm, wasn't going to go there, but yeah, okay, yeah, I will. So, yeah. Of course you will. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's get to the actual uh, hockey portion. Mm-hmm. Um, so as it is still oily in the season, we won't um, bury ourselves in stats too much, um, but we will go over um, the results. And, um, boy, this thing gets slower and slower every year. I think I need to reinstall a stupid app. So much better was just the caps and not the NHL st- sticking its paws all. Over. Okay, so we started. All right, we started with last Tuesday, um, with a home game uh, against the Dallas Stars, and that resulted in an overtime loss, um, four three, and then. Probably the worst game of the of the bunch uh, last Thursday uh, in Smackville against the Predators. Mm-hmm. Um, I, okay, so I was watching this game and it was like four one, I think. Right. And it was late in the second period, and I was like, "All right, you know what? I'm tired. I'm going to bed." 
looks like this team has it in hand. I wake up, I check the score. Yeah, no, that's yeah. Yeah, that that's that's when that's when I I did my my cursing act that would have you know made the impressed saltiest, me saltiest sailor blush. Oh. Uh, and then. So so uh, all of a sudden, um, because the game before the Dallas game, uh, they had also lost in overtime uh, right. Saturday night uh, to Carolina in overtime. <sighs> so three straight losses, even though uh, in a possible six points, they got two of them, which is which is better than nothing. Right. But that's what that's what started the all the negativity and all the, you know, all the all the crap that I mentioned earlier, and and trust me, I wasn't happy about it either. But you know, a, a sane chill person, out. well, chills out and finds the reasons why things start to go wrong and tries to make them right. Mm-hmm. So so taking a quick glance at those two games anyway. So uh, Genny Kuznetsov in his return opened the scoring, uh, and then they pretty much trade goals after that. And Sagan gets the the game winner. Uh, they almost lost, actually, if not for Nick Bats- Backstrom tying it up with uh, 31 seconds left in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, okay, so here vitals: uh, 32 shots for the good guys, 26 for Dallas. Uh, faceoff wins face all most of the major stat categories. The Caps look pretty good. They came out on, on the good end. Um, except for the power play and the some of the possession stats, right. which might have been what really told the story. Uh, but you know, not not that horrible a game. Just the second loss. Okay, and then you jump over to Nashville to that game. <sighs> okay, so the yeah the third period. So again, uh, they come out to a lead, and the third period again is what dooms them. Uh, so let's see, uh, Nashville, um, one minute, four minutes, five minutes. So one, two, three, four straight goals in a span of five straight goals in a span of, uh, nine and a half minutes. Not good. Uh, no, not good. Not good. Oh, okay. So one of those, one of those five was Oshies, of course, um, that put them up by five, four. But then the the Preds kept coming back, and I I, I got to tell you uh, this, and so this is and uh, look a lot of, a lot of the negativity, as I said, was focused on maybe a select few, and Braden Holtby was kind of caught up in that because mm-hmm. as we all we all saw uh, last night, Ilya Samsonov. Where's the call? Where's the calm, Sammy? What that um, that sounds well maybe so damn. because that that kind of sounds like a Russian uh, fancy entertainment system. Samsonov. Yeah, it just it's just no. Yes. No, it doesn't. But no, I, I no. But I think that just oh, Sammy, Sammy, I'm okay with. I think um, I think Aubrey was telling me today because we were talking about this in line that I think Oshi called him Sammy in an interview. And it's like, you know what? Can't we just go with that? Because the way it, it almost becomes like theatrical, the way everyone says it, it's like, you know, we can say Wilson, Oshi, you know, uh, Backstrom and all these names. And we get to his, and it's like, you have to have this dramatic pause. The Sam. So no. And it's like, God, if we do that every single time, um, it gets old. So Sammy, Sam, whatever you want to call him. Um, but yes, go on. So is, is is that what she said? Yes, that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I couldn't resist. I know. Mine are always still funnier, but that's okay. I'll give it to you. Uh, you say so. Uh, give it to you. That's what she okay. Said. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. But the right. So moving on, uh, yes, uh, uh, Sammy won his game last night, his second in in two starts. So that's getting a lot of people thinking. Well, we should get rid of Holpe now. It, no, no, come on. Yep. All and all you've got to do, all you got to do, uh, you are who you 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 of those out there that uh, know how to work this app better than I do. All you got to do is look at the replays of some of these goals. Particularly, 
uh, the one scored by Philip Forsberg and Ooh. Matt Duchesne. Right. Uh, yeah. Sorry, folks. I said the F word. <laughs> and it's making my producer sick. Oh. That as as Joe, I think it was it was either Joe or Locker. No, I'm, no, it was Rob Carlin who said uh, Forsberg is the F word. Yeah, to cap, and and rightly so. Yeah, but all you've got to do is see the replays of both of those two goals, and I think you will see the key to why the Caps did not come out the winner. Uh, they had, <coughs> pardon me, they hung Holpe out to dry. Yep. They just, it, where was the defense? There wasn't any. It, it left. It grew wings. It it died. I don't know. But it, well, there was, you know, there was I, definitely a, a different presence in Nashville versus uh, the game last night in the Big D, which I still kind of snicker at. But that's what they call it. Um, with Sammy. You know, and, and and it's it's a little bit confusing of, you know, you should be giving your, your goalie um, 100% uh, as the goalie is giving the team 100%. But if you're, you know, leaving them kind of um, out to dry, it's, it's frustrating, so frustrating. And then it's so easy for people to say, oh, trade them. It's time to, you know, hope it's done in June or, you know, hope it's done this year, like, it's just well, well last week uh, okay so last last week you you said you were not seeing Holtby at his best true so you saw all of the games uh -huh. right and since everybody's quickly making that comparison i mean what what do you think honestly it's it's, it's actually it's funny that you say this because um when christian levesque and i saw each other today we we briefly had a moment to just kind of you know have a little nerd <laughs> caps moment talk uh in line and both of us agree that the hype of sammy from whether it be the fans the commentators the just the media the social media has really <laughs> unfortunately gotten into holpie's head and what we know from before is that when he is in a negative place um, you know, whether it's hearing negative thoughts and he can't get out of it, um, it's consumed him. And I truly feel like, okay, you know, that this is something that, that is unfortunate because we're, you know, here he is our top goalie and, and everybody loves the guy. And, and then all of a sudden it's, you know, we hear this stuff and they you automatically want to bring up the 22 year old who doesn't quite have the experience, but has a skill you know, we're, he's kind of losing the respect of the fans and, and that's disappointing, but that's got to get in your head, unfortunately. And he is one of those players. So I think it is very much, you know, hopefully, like I said, I thought he gave about 75%. Um, I'm sure there's a ton of people that disagree with me because, you know, if you do look at, if you do look at it, you know, like where was our, where was our defensive lineman? Um, but still, if you if you have that mental block, it is really debilitating. So I think that at this point, the fans, regardless of what you think, you have to rally behind the team and the players 100% and the coaches. That's what I think. I just think he's in a bad headspace right now because of the negativity. So you, you think because of that, he might be holding back? Maybe if not, not, not on purpose, I mean, but... Yes, because think, he's because he's distracted too. because he's he's distracted by potentially by the pressure of uh, living up to his past yes. and also also the fact that this is a contract year. Exactly. Well, of course. I mean, like you have here here it comes. You know, whatever uh, May June. You know, whenever the contract is, and it's like, okay, well, we love him. And the whole city loves him when he's. Holt beast. And then all of a sudden when he's just, you know, having an off game, people are ready to, to toss him aside. And you have Sammy coming in playing, you know, two games or three games kicking ass by the way, but it is only, you know, two games, 
or three games, you know, what, whatever. I feel like it's just two games. And yes, but we still have 80 freaking games to go. And so, you know, that's where Holpe's maturity and his patience and his skill level is going to kind of humble, you know, <laughs> that the Samsonovs and, and say, hey, listen, you may be a badass now, but you have to pace yourself. And no, you're not going to win every game. And yes, you have to rely on this and, and skill, but you also have to have faith in your, you know, defensive men. And I think that we have a hard time right now because it's not a consistent um, lineup every week. You know, we, we don't know what's going on with Kempney. Uh, when he comes back, are things going to change 100%? I don't know. I, I truly, you know, I'm, I'm kind of at a loss. I was not thrilled with Sieg's this last last week um you know certain players i'm like okay they're doing good and they're doing but that's to be expected so i think we just you know people just need to ride out that holpy is our our number one guy he's gonna do the best he can um but that negative headspace is because we're putting so much on a 22 year old who's brand new and that's just not the way to go yeah and you know what I, i'm really really glad you brought up some of those points because some of it has to be put on the defense and yeah, you, you mentioned, you mentioned Kempney being out of the lineup and, and, and yeah, it does create a, a, a bad look. Uh, I, well, not a bad look, but a different look. Uh, look, the, the goalie has to know, has to be able to rely on and communicate all three sets of defense partners has to know what their tendencies are, have to, has to be familiar with them, has to be able to trust them. And I don't know. I, the, the fact that there's, you know, some guys in there he hasn't worked with as much, you know, might it's quite possibly could be throwing things off a little bit. Right. And you'll never, but you'll never hear, you will never hear him put it on anybody else though. And that's because he's yeah. he's an ultimate team guy, and I think that that's why he's worthy of, you know, not look, not everybody not bailing on him, and and also look, I want to throw this out there. There's probably one of my favorite hockey pod, well, hockey, uh, podcasts in general. Okay, is is the Puck Podcast. Uh, I don't know if anybody out there has ever heard of it, but I highly recommend it if you want uh, an all 31 NHL team coverage okay but they gave their preview of the metropolitan division and they of course had the caps winning it and one of the cornerstones of reasoning for that is because and i quote Braden holtby is by far the most reliable goaltender of all eight teams in the metropolitan division wow and that's that says I mean, a lot yeah, that, that's high praise yeah, and it 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 says it doesn't say a lot about his competition, but it's, it does also say a lot about him, and that's because he's earned it. And just like you said just now, Anna Samsonov, Samsonov, sorry, so if I butchered that, I give up. Uh, Sammy has not had the exposure of playing against highly skilled men. Right. Braden Holpe, on the other hand, has been doing this for years in exactly. many different high, <laughs> high pressure, high value game situations. Right. That is the difference. And and that's why, you know, we you, whether you're looking at the goalies or you're looking at the top line or uh, regardless, you have vet players there for a reason because they're going to be able to calm the nerves, calm that you know, kind of impulsive impulsivity that the, that the newbies may have um, coming into any game and say, okay, listen, you know, yes, you want to go out there and yes, you want to, you know, you know, shoot goals and do, you know, be crazy. One, you have to be, you have to ha play smart hockey, but you also have to remember that you're to play 60 minutes of hockey, which unfortunately isn't, you know, really what we saw this last, I would say the first two games we saw it last night in the big D um, which maybe, I don't know, another favorite stadium. Um, but, 
you know, it's, it, it's, it's that kind of stuff where you have to say, all right, take it down, be mature about it, you know, roll with it. Like, Hey, we lost, but let's, you know, today's a new game versus the, the new young guys that come in. And it's like, yes, obviously you hear you're here cause you earned it skill wise and speed wise. But you have to remember that you're a team player. You have to remember what your job is on the ice, and you can't make stupid plays, and you can't be impulsive, and you got to do the sixty minutes. So yeah, you know, it, it's a perfect balance. So for for Holpe and and Sammy to be, you know, one one game and one the next, I'm okay with it. Yeah, look, I I stand by what I said last week in that. I don't blame Holtby, at least not as much as others would. And I look, I, I am more apt to, like you said, it the players, the rest of the team not giving a 60-minute effort. And, look, sorry, I'm going to beat this drum until he starts improving. And men may, you know, maybe he is starting to improve. But I also put some of it on Reardon and the coaching staff because, again, it's their job to put the team in the best position to win. And sometimes you just got to tell them to slow things down and notice that if you notice certain trends, you have to adjust. And I'm just not seeing it. Or if I am, I'm not seeing enough of it. But I think, you know, again, early in the season, and I, and I agree with you, it was very frustrating to see that, that first Dallas game at home for us. And then of course the Preds are like, Oh, these fucking fans. But I thought, you know, if, if that was the, if that's how the fans left thinking, where was the 60 minutes? Where was the support of the goalie? Where was the, you know, where was the chemistry? Where was the consistency? I thought if that's what needed to come from the coaches to the players, I thought it was relayed during that Dallas game in the big D last night because they looked good. They looked good. Damn good. And I'm not going to say it's because Sammy was in between the pipes. I'm just going to no, say right. that no, I think they, that they finally got it. They 1,000 times better. And yes, maybe they did figure it out uh, as a team, or maybe the coaching staff finally did play off the, the, the message of, hey, you guys, if you want to win, you need to start knuckling down in the last 20 minutes. Yeah. Agreed. And not not play a 40 minute game, not play a, a 90 foot game, but a 200 foot game and a 60 minute game. And okay. that all, it all added up. Now I just want to say one last thing about the goalie comparison. I, I, and I, you know, if, if you, and again, it's, it comes down to simple observation. Just watch these two guys play. And I think a lot of folks are apt to get on Holtby because he may give off the impression that he's not doing much. While if you see Samsonov, he's out in front of the crease. He's five, 10 feet out in front. He's side to side. He's flailing his stick in his arms and he's all kinds of active. And he's like, uh, well, he's like uh, maybe some of the kids in your class, Anna. I don't know. <laughs> Impulsive. After, before lunch. I, I, I don't know. Right. Stuff like that. But it's, it's two different styles. It is. And and I think I think uh fans are seeing this this new kid and saying, Wow, now I'm getting a lot more for my money. He's giving me some action here. Well, Holtby kind of stands and you know he's gives methodical. it Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. He's methodical, he plays his angles, he's making sure he's in the right place. Yes, he has he's quick and athletic when he has to be, but you know, he's he's never been ridiculously and overtly flashy or anything like that. No. And and then that's where I think there there's, you know, his Zen moment. He he needs to kind of, you know, get into his zone and nobody in the very, you know, little affect and you know, whether they score or they don't score, he, you know, still takes the helmet off, still, you know, does the water thing. And that's his thing. And and Sammy, I think, is, yeah, like you said, impressing people simply because, you know, he is moving. He's this kind of action, you know, action impulsivity kind of guy. He's like kind of all over the place. But it doesn't make one better than the other. You know, it, it's one's more methodical thinking about the game and really studying, you know, puck movement. And the other one is just 
you know, I'm going to be here, I'm going to be here, I'm going to be here, I'm going to be here. But a skill level, you know, shows that, I, you know, like that's what works for him. And, and he's proven to be, okay, can he do this? Is there going to be a time when we, you know, hit game 28 or game 38 that all of a sudden Sammy's not going to be the talk of the town, possibly? So. Right. We'll exactly. Think. And you and you have to you have to wonder, is that playing style going to wear going to wear on him exactly. um, where if he if he is more active and does end up getting a lot, a lot of starts, you know, is that going to wear him down a bit? And that that's where the maturity factor comes in. We have a guy who's handled this for quite a while, knows what to expect, knows how to handle what's thrown at him versus a guy who's, you know, this is his first year in the bigs. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we'll, we'll we'll see. You know, everybody's impressed by Holtby. Yeah, I mean, sorry, uh, Samsonov right now. And yes, the numbers bear that out. But two games, it right exactly two games. You know, it, it, small sample size, tiny tiny slice of the pie. You know, cal- calm your hormones, people. Okay, <laughs> yes, it's great that he's doing as well as he is doing. All right, but very tiny sample size, long, long season. <laughs> okay, okay, all in perspective. Yes. Uh, so I think, uh, yeah, I think we're. Uh, this is a good place to stop it for now. So uh, we're we're gonna hold it here. Hold it here. Hold it here. All right. You knew I'd work that in some way. Apparently, yes. Um, so, uh, Anna, did you have any anything else you want to get out there? Any any future uh, events? Uh, and, and uh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm. I was hoping to go to the game tomorrow night against the Avalanche. It's not going to happen, but that's okay. I'm. It's no worries. I'll watch it from home. Um, no, I, I'm all good. I think we had a great show. I appreciate meeting all the people today. Uh, face to face, it's always great to put a, a name and a face together. So that was awesome. And Ovechkin, yeah, pocket list marked off for sure. Oh yes, yes, definitely. Uh, thank, thank you, Captain, and thank you, uh, Captain, as well. Uh, the, uh, the 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 Babe Lab, that is the official dog. Lest lest I forget. Um, <laughs> and uh, so real real quick uh we're going to go over a preview of the next several games uh tomorrow evening uh, back at cap 1 the as anna mentioned already it'll be the colorado avalanche in andre burakovsky's return to his original nhl home that's a 5 o'clock puck drop uh yes. and I, and that's probably because it's it's the holiday no uh, it's not no no it's not because the Nats are playing at home. Oh, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, yes. Okay, so it's so that's that's a night game then that they're playing. Um, I think probably a seven o'clock game. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, oh, hey, that'll be cool. So, uh, yeah, finish the hockey and uh, hop on over to Nats Park and catch uh, catch that game. Hopefully, uh, they'll they'll wrap it up, uh, or or move towards wrapping it up. Uh, that that series. Uh, okay, so uh, Colorado on Columbus Day. Uh, that's Monday. Okay, so it's a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule for this week. All a homestand. Mm-hmm. Wednesday the sixteenth, seven o'clock puck drop. It's the Maple Leafs, uh, featuring uh, John Tavares and Mitch Marner. Mm-hmm. First uh, first action from them, and then Friday that's uh, the New York Rangers. Also a seven o'clock puck drop. Uh, our Timmy Panarin, the new addition. And uh, Capo Caco as well. Uh, good, good, going to be good to see them. Going to be a nice test for them. Uh, Rangers, I think, uh, getting off to a pretty hot start, so I hear. So uh, yeah, that that's going to be uh, that's going to be a heck of a game, I think. Could be. Yeah, a- absolutely. I don't know yet. I'm kind of mm, on the Rangers, but we'll see. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right. So uh, for Anna Knox. This is the Blue Liner on Point signing off and reminding you that an octopus will always beat a shark in a fight. You know why? Because it's well armed. <laughs> Hallelujah and let's go, Caps. 
No caps. This has been another episode of the Power Play Point Podcast. All episodes are available from Apple Podcasts, the Podbean app, blueliner77.podbean.com, and now available from Stitcher. Music by Joe McAllister, voiceover by Jeffrey Conkle.